Hi everybody, I'm here live in my dad, Bill Clark's kitchen, and my mom's back here in the background hanging out with us. And uh, we've been promoting that today we were gonna talk uh, in regards to my dad's heart attack that he had about seven and a half years ago now. So uh, I wanted to bring dad on and give him the opportunity to you know, really just explain the experience that he went through. Of course, all of us, every member of our family went through this experience with him. You know, so if I brought my sister on and my brother on and, you know, uh, my mom on, we would all tell you a different story of, of what we went through when dad had the heart attack. Uh, but my primary reason for why I wanted to bring dad on is because he's a big part of integrity. He's a huge part of my life and why I do what I do. And he's an incredible motivator for all of our clients at Integrity and for all of our trainers. And if you talk to any of those clients or any of those trainers, they will all tell you that they know my dad and that he inspires them every time they come into the gym. Uh, and just to give you a little bit of a backdrop, um, you know, dad and I, we grew up working out. That's what we did. Uh, we started in the gym. Well, when did we start in the gym, Dad? At the Y, what was it, like third grade, second grade? Yeah, I mean, grade it school. Been, it would have been when you were doing uh, gymnastics. You, you broke your uh, Right, leg. that broke that in the sixth grade. So we, we've been in the gym. And when I say in the gym, I don't just mean playing basketball, playing soccer. We've lifted weights since I was a, at a very young age. You know, we, we, we really have. We've always exercised. We ran track, you know, we played every sport imaginable. We've just, athleticism has just been part of our life. It's always been since I can remember. Um, so it, being in the gym together, you know, when I started to become a personal trainer, one of the best things about being a personal trainer was that literally at about three o'clock every day, I got to see my dad. He came in the gym and he would work out, didn't matter what gym I was a trainer at, he, he would come in and work out. He even drove down to Powerhouse and worked out some. But he's been a part of my fitness journey uh, personally and, and, and being an athlete, but then he's also been a part of my career. And again, one of the, the primary reasons why I do what I do is because dad kept me physically fit my entire life and he made fitness a pri priority. He emphasized that it should be a priority. And we also ate well and we ate healthy. We had a garden in our backyard, even though we didn't have a backyard. We were just a healthy living family. And, and dad always really put an emphasis on, on health. And so I wanna explain the story about his heart attack because when dad talks about it, it really helps people to understand that, you know, you can overcome, you can accomplish anything you set yourself out to accomplish, no matter what the challenges are. And so many of my clients were part of, you know, when this happened, they were part of my life and they were such a big support system to me and to dad. And we appreciate that so much to all of you. And, you know, over the years, all the different gyms, so many people have met dad and, and, and they're all very familiar with him and, and have such a positive relationship. But now at Integrity Training Systems, dad, like I said, is a very big part of it. So the heart attack happened about seven and a half years ago, It'll be eight years in August. And uh, he had a quadruple bypass. And then they also had to uh, input a, a defibrillator. So I always call it a pacemaker, but it's actually a defibrillator. And so what happened was, uh, me personally, I was in Florida. I had just arrived in Florida the day before and kind of got up and started doing some things. I went to the gym and worked out and just kind of hung around on the beach a little bit. Went back to the uh, house that we rented and <clears throat> fell asleep because I was exhausted because we drove down there. And I saw my sister called and uh, I don't really get to talk to my sister that often. You know, I love her, we get along great, so there's no reason. But we just live a ways away and we just don't talk on the phone that often. So, you know, it's five o'clock and, and it's, you know, just in the middle of, of the day, you know, the afternoon. And I'm thinking, why did my sister just call? So she leaves me a voicemail and says, you know, Deb, I need you to call me. And so suddenly I'm laying in the bed and I, I just lose my stomach. You know, my stomach just falls out. I, it's like an adrenaline rush. And I'm thinking something's, something's not okay. You know, and it just didn't even occur to me to think that my dad was in the hospital. 
because growing up, my dad was the pillar of health for our family. So, I mean, he worked out six days a week. He was always eating vegetables and making us eat vegetables. You know, he was always doing something. You know, he was riding a bike somewhere. He was running up the street. You know, dad was always doing something. So it's like, well, you know, it couldn't be dad that was in the hospital. So she tells me what happened. So I went in and I slept for about six more hours and then got in the car and drove back to St. Louis so I could get to the hospital where dad was in intensive care. And they were, you know, he was, he was basically going through the cooling process that you put, you know, that, that you get put through when you're ha when, after you've had a heart attack. So when I arrived, you know, I obviously couldn't speak with him. We really didn't know what was going to happen until he got through that cooling process. He, you know, stayed in this sort of coma, you know, situation for about 14 days. You know, so it wasn't two days and then we're going to wake him up. It was 14 days where dad was genuinely, you know, had a, uh, um, I guess, what would you call that dad that did breathe? What do they stick down your throat to help you breathe? Ven I can't, ventilator. ventilator. He yeah. was on a ventilator for the 14 days. And one thing I can say is when I was in Florida, I went and laid down at five o'clock because in the afternoon I found myself feeling really sick. It just can kind of overwhelm me. It just came over me around three o'clock I just got very very sick and I had to lay down and that was right when my dad uh, had had his heart attack and he was at the gym it was at Gold's Gym on Highway K and they were uh, working out him and my mom and sure enough he passed out and they called the paramedics but the wonderful thing that happened was the uh, personal trainer at Gold's Gym got the defibrillator out and saved, got the AED out and saved my dad's life. And the firemen that were right across the street, they were not far, they said that had that personal trainer not used that AED that, you know, dad may or may not still be here today. So they, of course, rushed him to the hospital. Again, he was, you know, on a ventilator and in that, you know, that coma for 14 days, we had the pastor from church come and, you know, we were praying for him every single day. We were there all day, every day, all night. We all took shifts. I mean, we never left his side. He was never alone. Um, one day, they, you know, they told us, okay, the next day, we're taking the defibrillator out. We're going to see if, if he can breathe on his own. So uh, that, uh, that, day, that, that day that they were doing it, I was praying Psalm 91 over him and and just believe in god that a miracle was going to happen because i truly believed that my dad had more life left to live and sure enough they took that ventilator out and there was dad ready ready to roll he was kind of just ready to start getting going and sure enough we had to have a night shift from there on because dad tried to escape the hospital quite a few times he was ready to go home he was tired of being in the hospital so then at that point they set him up for the surgery and uh, went through the, the heart surgery. And, uh, you know, one of the things I wanted to talk about, Dad, was when we first got out of surgery, and I spent a lot of time with you after surgery, and you were still in the hospital. Um, that first day, and I don't know if you remember this, uh, when um, they came in with your food. I don't know if you remember when they came in and they brought you that insurer and they brought you some stuff and I said, oh, whoa, whoa, we don't want to have that. You know, do you remember? I, you, you know, you're on, you know, you're kind of out of it, but do you remember me kind of like putting the big stop on the insurer? I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can sort of remember things like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of what took place for, uh, the, you know, like processing uh, barns, I remember very little, if yeah. anything, of it. Moving over to St. Joseph, I remember uh, uh, very little in the beginning, and, and it was almost like you were in and out of it, like you just said a few minutes ago. Right, right. Uh, yeah. I can remember you telling him that this is not the right food for me. Right. Yeah. This was the day that he had had the surgery uh, for, like, the bypass surgery. So we hadn't had the defibrillator put in yet. That was a much easier surgery for him to go through. Not that it was easy, but it was much easier. But right after he had the bypass surgery, they brought him into the room. I was in there with them. And this was like a, 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 a room that we went from the super intense pain room to like a, a more relaxed pain room. And she came in with Insure and wanted him to start drinking that. And I was like, 
you just cleared out his heart. And I, I flipped the bottle over and I said, I'm not gonna have him drinking soybean oil, high fructose corn syrup, canola oil, and you know all these different ingredients that I'm 100% not okay with. And that lady looked at me like I had three heads. You know, she yeah. just, she thought, well, that's like, she'd never heard anyone put up a fight to being given insure. And so I said, look, you give me an hour, I'll be back here with something that would be okay for him to drink. So I immediately ran, picked up the J-Rob, uh, you know, and, and I didn't, I think I got it from like GNC or something cause you know, Powerhouse was yeah. so far away at the time. And, and so I ran over to GNC, picked up some J-Rob, ran right back to the hospital and started giving dad J-Rob in, in the intensive care. And the, the nurse, you know, was like, well, we got to get that approved. No problem. Go to the doctor, get it approved. They came back in and I'm, I'm wondering, are you going to bark at these ingredients? Cause I got a whole list of barks for these ingredients and I'm just waiting you know, for someone to come in and have an issue with it. Well, they didn't. So anyways, we got to the point where dad was ready to take in whole food, you know, so, and that took a couple of days before that happened because you had a lot of difficulty right. swallowing. And your options for the food were pretty limited in terms of being able to be healthy at the hospital. Yeah, they were very limited. They're, yeah. They're, uh, I mean, they're, practically everything on the list uh, you would would say don't don't eat now right but, right uh, having okay. had a heart we're, attack not having had a heart attack right, right right yeah so we we basically at that point you know said okay I'm gonna have to look at this menu and try to manufacture a build for a meal for him until we can get some meals cooked for him you know and at that time we didn't have a place like pure place you know, we couldn't no. just run over to Pure Plates and get and get food for you. So we worked with the kitchen, had them prepare, you know, fish and different things, but still even the fish would come saturated in butter. You know, I mean, there was just still a lot of stuff that just didn't make any sense. The juice, you know, was like, it wasn't an all natural juice. You know, it had stuff in it, you know, so we really had some issues in that department. So we, we went to the house and we cooked all of dad's food. I mean, every, every bit of it. And so we would bring up sweet potatoes. We would bring up meat. We would bring up everything that he could eat. Although breakfast, we were able to do pretty well at the hospital with, and they did, you know, eggs and fruit and stuff like that for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we were, we were, we were just astonished at how serious his surgery was and what they were willing to feed him right after the surgery. And that that wasn't even, they weren't even giving it a second thought, but they were so surprised by how serious we were about wanting to do something different. You know, another thing that was very surprising to me was the staff that we worked with. Of course, they were very loving, very kind, very considerate, but we had out of probably 15 people that we were working with on a regular basis, we had one doctor that was in good shape and that was able to you know that wasn't overweight and that was able to understand the logic behind why we were being so detailed and so intense with dad and his name was dr kardash and it's spelled k-a-r-d-e-s-c-h and he's out in this area out in the st charles county area he's a cardiologist and we've actually referred clients at integrity to dr kardash because we were so impressed with the, the quality of service that he gave, but we were also impressed with the fact that Dr. Kardash is, he focuses on health, you know, and wellness, and that he actually takes care of himself, you know. So mom and dad have even brought some of our cookbooks to him at his office, and he's really been a blessing to mom and dad, yeah. you know. So, so dad, tell me about, you know, you're, you're in the hospital, and they tell you it's time to go home, and suddenly you're in a parking lot and you're standing, you know, by your car and you're getting out of this wheelchair and you get yourself home and you've got to walk into your house and, and out of nowhere you, you realize how hard it is to get from point A to point B and everything's changed. You know, you've spent your whole life in the gym and now suddenly you're going from the garage to the, you know, to the living room. How, how did that go for you? I mean, what happened? Well, it, 
your your thoughts probably started back in the hospital because they would ask you to get up and and, and walk and they would ask you to, uh, to you know try to get into some kind of condition to where you could go home right and uh, I can remember walking uh, my big trip was to walk out of my room down the hall out into the yeah, Bob would take me out there we'd go out down where the waiting area was and we'd sit there because there wouldn't be anybody and rest so that was a great big deal to walk right. maybe right. 30 to 50 feet right i remember uh, and then come come back so you're pretty proud of that but we they allow us to do that as often as we could they also had physical therapy where i told them we lived in a two-story house and i was going to have to be able to uh, climb stairs and they had a girl would I didn't go to physical therapy at all, but I had a girl come down and take me into the stairwell and walk me up stairs, check my heart rate, then bring me back down. Uh, that was the extent of it. But when I got home, uh, I'd been there so long that I, I didn't. It was it was just a, a relief to be able to come home. You know, mm -hmm. you're just home sweet home. You know? Right. Right. Uh, but you could, if you walked around the room, you felt like you achieved something, mm -hmm. you achieved something mm -hmm. very, very successful. Yeah. And and like we go sit in the backyard uh, to walk down the sidewalk to the front of the house was a, was a was a big deal. Right. So several times a day, I would literally walk through the kitchen, through the dining room, through the front room, down the hallway, right. in a circle, in a circle that probably wasn't. 20 feet right but you thought you were doing something you do this five six ten times a day right you know. right it, literally just walking around the perimeter of our house was a tremendous feat for him I mean it was that was his way of building his strength back up was just walking around our house coming from a person who used to run on a treadmill you know, for 30, 40 minutes before yeah. or after an hour long lifting workout, dad used to lift and do cardio six days a week. So coming from a person that did that regularly to now suddenly walking around the perimeter of our house being that difficult, I mean, it, it, it's just, it's just amazing. However, God spared his life. So he was taking it one day at a time, one victory at a time. And we were just truly thankful you know that you were improving at the level at which you're improving so when we first got to the house you know dad first uh, got back home what we tried to do was uh, have food a hundred percent prepared for the week so I mean there was basically everything that that he needed for the week to eat was done and so uh, we I, I designed what I felt like would be an appropriate nutrition program for dad after having had the heart attack um, they had met with uh, the dietitian after I had already designed the food and had already kind of created the food. Uh, so I want to talk about that a little bit. But first, I want to just kind of explain to you what was the diet when Dad first got out of the hospital. And so what I did was I cleared my schedule on Sundays, and uh, I used to work at Powerhouse Gym, and so I cleared the schedule down on Sundays, and I started working out of a fitness center out in Wentzville. And so uh, what I would do is I'd work a couple hours there, I'd run by Whole Foods on my way up, and I would get all of dad's food at Whole Foods, and then we'd, we, you know, some of it we'd get at Deerberg's, but for the most part we got it at Whole Foods. And we'd drive it over there, and it was like team cooking. You know, dad would kind of sit in the chair and keep us company, and mom would be making vegetables and, you know, getting the fruit in a container, and. Would it take us maybe two hours to do everything, yeah. you think? We'd make the food for the entire week, and it probably right. took about two hours. Um, and I bought, you know, a couple skillets, a couple grill pans. And so what we'd start the day with was um, a, either a J-Rob shake. Uh, you'd have J-Rob shake with oatmeal and some berries. Uh, and, and then, egg. and then egg eggs. Whites. Yeah, eggs, egg whites. So mom would make that every single day before she'd yeah. go to bed. You know, yeah, she'd set the that. stuff up. Yep, yep. Still, and you still eat that. I still yeah. eat the, the eggs and uh, oatmeal, mm -hmm. half cup of oatmeal. And uh, I cut it that, down to three eggs, uh, probably just because it cost. Uh, right. And, uh, and one bit, half banana. Yeah. And, and 
you know, we don't do the, you don't do the J-Rob powder that much anymore because you just do the eggs, you know, yeah. so it just kind of works yeah. out. Um, we did the J-Rob powder in the beginning, you know, sort of out of convenience to know that you'd have two different options. Yeah. You know, if you couldn't, if mom couldn't get up and make eggs or something like that, you know, you have a shake that you could do. I, I probably know? did the J-Rob for at least five years. Yeah. And, and, and the biggest reason I probably cut back is, is uh, cost because, right. you know, I, I, uh, the job that I had three years ago, I had no more. So, uh, right. you, want, you know, you, you were reducing what you, you had to spend your money on and that was right that's not a good 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 idea thing to do but that's what we did no but eggs is a um, is a fine replacement oh, yeah. for it you know so you don't i mean in and, that case it's really reasonably, okay reasonably right price, right but, uh, so we would start with that and then kind of middle of the morning what would you grab for a snack well the biggest thing i look for is you know the lower bar uh, okay. protein bars uh, or some type of a protein uh, had walnuts at one point I think as a walnuts, snack yeah yeah, yeah. and correct. then the Laura bars we would get uh, would be like the cherry version the apple version oh. the blueberry or the lemon or something like uh, that yeah or I guess you have almonds the yeah the yeah. apple and the blueberry so we only did the fruit versions of that and then for lunch uh, well, we kind of counterbalance with lunch. We would do one or the other. We would do the salmon that we uh, pan seared, yeah. and then the broccoli, and then we would do some rice with that. Yeah. Brown, right. Brown, brown, brown rice. rice. Okay. And then uh, the opposite meal we would do was the crock pot uh, shredded chicken, and yeah. we put the barbecue sauce on that. Yeah. And then mashed sweet potatoes. And then, do we do a vegetable with that, or is it just the sweet potatoes? Oh, yeah. We have yeah. We oh, mashed cauliflower. Yeah. Cauliflower. Uh, yeah. Most people thought I was eating mashed potatoes. Right, mashed potatoes, but it was mashed cauliflower. Uh, yeah, yeah. All of it was excellent. You put additives in it that uh, were good for you, like a, a certain kind of organic dressing, right. Dra dressing. Right, right, right. Uh, all of it tastes excellent. That was the thing. It, it, you look forward to eating it, but you, you weren't hungry. Uh, you just knew it was that time of the day we got we got to eat lunch. Right. Now when I went back to work, uh, everyone would see what I was eating every day, and 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 my weight was where you want it to be. I was at right. 150, 150, and uh, you know you just couldn't get them to recognize how important that, that right. good food was. Yes. Uh, but it did give you the energy. It did. Uh, uh, promote the, the healthy uh, direction you want to go. So, and on that note, you know, when we're talking about, you know, the change of the food and after the heart attack, before the heart attack, how much did you weigh? I was told I weighed nine, 194. Uh, the interesting thing about that, that sounds like an awful lot, but uh, I would work out in the gym for uh, three hours on, right. on a Sunday at Gold's and I would go through you know all the body, all the muscle groups. When I did a workout, uh, I, I early early in life I did body parts. You know, five to six days a week, probably six days a week. Right. I enjoyed it so much, but uh, it, there, a few years before the heart attack, I would I had created this routine that would get me through the whole body. I would do cardio first, and then I would, once the cardio was done, I'd jump on legs. Yeah. And then you just work your way. Through the body, through the whole yeah. body, and, yeah. and, and uh, you'd be there several hours, but you enjoyed it, right? So, so the 194. I mean, yes, you did possess a lot of muscle tissue, but 194, you still had some body fat, you know, because considering the fact that you're 150, 155 right now, right? Yeah. You stay, you I've stay ne steady. 150. I've never. Uh, I've been 152 to, to 147 for uh, seven and a half years now. For seven and a half years, he has been able to stay the same weight. <laughs> you know, I mean, after people have a heart attack, it doesn't mean they can't just gain all the weight back. I mean, so it's pretty impressive that he's been able to stay that same weight for that long, seven and a half yeah. years. And the reason that's happening is because it's consistency in the exercise, but it's consistency in the food. The food has truly changed dad's life. And so when he looks back before the heart attack, Tell me a little bit about uh, the digestive issues 
you know, sort of the energy problems that you had before the heart attack, which literally yeah. got fixed when you changed your food after the heart attack. Yeah, in the seven and a half years on this on this nutrition program I'm on, I've, I've, I've never had an upset stomach, uh, but before the heart attack, I had Pepsid AC, Rolaids, and Plums in my desk. I always laugh about this, but when I tell people about it, I would take them every day. Yeah. I, I would need them. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I, I remember after, that. After the heart attack, this food, uh, you, I never had indigestion, which surprises me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, literally went from taking a Tums, a Tagamet, or a Zantac, or something like that every single day to seven and a half years of never <laughs> taking a Tums. You know, so it's like, uh, you know, it, the change of the food has been kind of monumental. But talk about your energy. Talk about how you feel fueled, you know, just the satisfaction in the food and, and you know, just yeah. hunger maybe, you know, and just how you've been able to kind of curve any of that, I, you know. I tell people often about uh, uh, how I, I never get tired and I never get hungry. Uh, and then what I meant by, by the tired, the example I love to give is I used to do a 36-hole golf tournament yeah. twice a year. And I can remember before my heart attack, when the 25th hole come around, you were ready to quit, give up. Uh, and the whole group was that way. And after the heart attack, I would be in condition, be in shape, but I would play the whole 36 holes and never think about, uh, um, we've got to get this over with. Right. Uh, that was the condition I was in. Yeah. Uh, I, I find it interesting. You can work out in the gym for uh, an hour or two and, or get on the treadmill, spend, spend 55 minutes on the treadmill. You get off, you're not tired. And, and it's, it's, it has to be the food because there's nothing else I'm taking. So, right, right. Uh, so I'm impressed by that. Yeah, so. and it's, it's his, Dad's food has remained consistent for the seven and a half years, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it doesn't mean he eats salmon and broccoli and rice every single day, or he eats, you know, chicken, barbecue chicken and, and green beans and, you know, right. and sweet potatoes every single day, but he eats that flow. He eats a very consistent flow that would be kind of guide, guided and acceptable in the integrity I, nutrition program, you know, that kind of family of I foods. Try to keep everything clean. I, like you said, I don't eat as much salmon as I used to, cause I, and I love salmon. It's right. one of my favorites. It's just expensive. From them. Yeah. Uh, it's just, chicken. Yeah, I eat a lot of chicken, because the way we fix that chicken, you just, you just love eating it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, uh, and I still eat the vegetables. They might not be, I don't eat as much broccoli, but it's, but if the opportunity is there, I eat it. Yeah. The, wit, the way beans. we make the green beans, I eat a lot of it because it tastes that good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that, that's the, 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 the message that needs to get across to a lot of people who have heart attacks and, and re, are trying to recover from surgery is make your food so it tastes good yeah. and it's good for you. Right. A lot of people will complain that it's, that it's dry or, or they're tired of it because it's plain, plain chicken and plain fish. Right. Well. All the fish I had was never plain, and it was never, right. uh, you know, boring to eat because it tasted that great. Right. It, actually, that whole situation is what motivated me to write my cookbook. My very yeah. first cookbook was that I just felt like people just didn't think, you know, that they could make clean food taste good. Yeah. You know, so we, that's that's when I wrote my, that first cookbook. And my meal, you know. my meals are in that book. Right, they are, exactly. Yeah, your whole meal plan is in that first cookbook. So when you met with the registered dietitian at the hospital, what did they tell you? Yeah, well, when you're in cardiac rehab, they have a dietitian come in and, and you don't have to, to see them, but you, you know, you can. So I asked if Barb could come in, my wife and uh, your mother. Uh, and there was about 10 to 11 people in this room and there, every single, one of them, but uh, I would say Barb and me were very overweight. You can see why they were in the situation they were in. Uh, and all of them were complaining about how bad, how they were tired of plain chicken and plain fish. Right. So I described to all of them what I was eating, how good the food was, uh, how I was not tired or hungry, 
and uh, we bought our, and I said we buy our food at uh, Whole Foods and we buy it at uh, Stivers. And the, the 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 only comment I I got back from the dietitian was, well, you know what they say about Whole Foods? You spend your whole paycheck. Right. I, I, I didn't was unable I felt to get the message across that you can make good food. Yeah. And it and it'll change how you feel and how you look, and uh, it'll change your life. Yeah, and that's what it's done for you, for sure. Yeah. Food has been, it's been the pivotal point in keeping you well and really yeah. just extending your life and and making it to where you can have a full time job. You know, you know, yeah. you can be, you know, seventy one years old, have a full time job, take care of a house. You know, you, he gets to the gym at five a.m. Uh, he stays there, you know, for an hour and a half to two hours. Then he comes home, takes care of his house, goes into work at 10 o'clock, stays at work until 7 o'clock at night, and then goes back home, you know. And, and most people are complaining because they have to work 9 to 5 that they don't have time to get into the gym, and it's just so many excuses. So talk to me about after the heart attack. I know you had to go through a period of physical therapy, you know, where the, it's more just getting you ready to be able to start to exercise. Yeah. But when they took you out of physical therapy and moved you over to the cardiac rehab, and suddenly before you know it, you're gonna start actually exercising. How did that go? Uh, Given the fact that you'd worked out your, your whole life, my whole yeah. life for sure. Then in the fitness center, we've been at Powerhouse Gym, we've been at Gold's Gym, we were at George Turner's Gym, we were at the YMCA. Yeah. 24-hour uh, fitness, Rhino Fitness, Complete Fitness, Integrity Fitness, we've been everywhere, right? And now you're in cardiac rehab. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was very surprising, it was very, uh, how do you want to say it, uh, uh, laughable inside because uh, I would do 10 minutes on the, uh, well, they, they put all, all the, uh, uh, the leads and stuff to, to track your heart rate and your your breathing and everything and your oxygen and uh, then they'll put you on the treadmill for 10 minutes no incline like a 1.5 barely moving they'll put you on and and that's about all you could do probably uh, they have put you on a, uh, a bicycle a very dated bicycle for, for this hospital actually all of, I, I felt bad about all their equipment because it's very dated mm -hmm. but uh, it gets the job done and then the very the third cardio exercise was they had the old baseball thing mm -hmm. for the shoulder, mm -hmm. for yeah. the rotator cuff. Right. Uh, do five minutes on that. Then you go over to the dumbbells, which they started me with, was three pounds. Three they pounds. Three yeah. exercises. Yeah. And that was the part I laughed about the most because I can remember doing so much heavier. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but I started with three pounds, and and, and my message is. You have, you know, you're going to start slow. You're going to start where it's light, and you want to work your way up, and you want to give yourself time to work up. Yeah. And that's what cardiac cardiac rehab does. It gives you time to get back to where you where you were. It was about eight weeks uh, uh, for one hour, um, and and they check your heart, your blood pressure, and, and everything before you start, and then they check it when you're done before they let you go. They're monitoring all that as you go, so I guess they let you go. When, they'll make you sit down, and when you're in certain stage, they'll let you go. Right. But it, I, I can remember one time kind of goofing around and doing it a little hard, and the, and the nurse immediately said, slow down. Yeah, you know? so yeah. So they, they know where you're at. And this is my dad in cardiac rehab when I was at Powerhouse. So the time I was at Powerhouse, it was just funny. My dad said, can you get me a rope? <laughs> And I said, what? <laughs> he said, I need a rope to take with me to cardiac rehab because they don't have a rope and I, I want to be able to do my triceps. And I'm like, okay, dad, I'll get a rope. <laughs> no problem at all. And so you ended up basically having almost like a membership at that place for a, a longer time than the normal person in there would have because you wanted to be able to actually start working out, but you wanted to do it nice and slow, you know. Yeah, yeah they have two programs there that basically have a an L-shaped room on one side is cardiac rehab, on on the other side is basically their gym, so to speak. Right. When you graduate from eight weeks of cardiac rehab, you can sign up and pay forty dollars a month and come in there 
three days a week. They're only open Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Right. And you do the same exercise. But they had a basically a machine over there that allowed you to uh, uh, do triceps and do uh, uh, hammer curls. Mm -hmm. And that's right. I asked you for the rope, and you got me the rope, and that's what I was doing. I had to get permission to use that. Machine. Right. So yeah. So yeah. And. Uh, uh, because I wanted to do more, and it, the the heaviest dumbbell was 15 pounds. It took me a couple of years to work up to those 15 pounds. So yeah. I, I was there at least three, three or more years before. Uh, before you decided to go to the. comfortable that I could go to a gym. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you decided to go to. That's when you went to Complete Fitness. When yeah. I was at Complete yeah. Fitness, and they just uh, opened. Right, and and Dan was nice enough to get you the membership right. so you could come in and, and use it and so then when he was at complete fitness we were all just kind of like you know even though it had been three years we we're still all real nervous and all just watching you know and making sure he was good and now it's just amazing he is at our gym at the, at the, at the crack of dawn and I mean, it just doesn't i don't i don't sit and think and worry well i hope my dad's okay you know what i mean half the time and maybe I don't know. Maybe I should, but I don't. I, half the time, I'm thinking if anything happens to anybody in the gym, Dad will be there to take care of them. You know what yeah. I mean? And and he uses all the equipment. Um, but let's use some examples, Dad. So, how much time do you spend on a treadmill now? I spend. Uh, or an elliptical, or whatever you uh, do. Basically, my cardio is a uh, treadmill. I do uh, 30 minutes of walking at uh, 3.6, 3.7, 3.8 for every 10 minutes uh, and then incline at five. But it took, like, a complete, I didn't do that when I first right. started. I might have did 20 minutes and it took me those three years to complete. I never ran it complete, yeah. I don't believe. Uh, I don't think so. And, mm -hmm. uh, Not that I saw, I yeah. remember, yeah. And then I'd do 30 minutes of walking. And then I'd move over to electrical and do 10 minutes because before my heart attack, I used to do what, an hour on, mm -hmm. on elliptical and uh, and then move from an electrical to a treadmill and run for a half hour. Yeah. Uh, Lots of cardio. I would lose three pounds yeah. doing uh, cardio because they had a scale in the, in the locker room and I'd bring in two shirts and I'd go in and change into a dry shirt and then go do the weight. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, when I moved to your gym, I basically kept, I still keep the 30 minute walk up and then I. Uh, watch my heart rate. I try to keep my heart rate in the, the low 100s, like 105, one, something like that, because mm -hmm. that's fat burning for... Uh, for the medications and yeah. stuff that you take. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, not yeah. so much that, it's just I know it's fat burning and you I'm just not feel trying, it. Yeah. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to do, over, overdo it. Right. Uh, and then I ran a half mile, then I, I remember sending you texts about there, I reached my goal. Right. And I right. ran a mile, now I'm running two miles. Yeah. So I'm putting about 57 minutes total yeah. on the treadmill, and then I move over to the elliptical and do 10 minutes on there. That's incredible. And so, and then will you weight train after the cardio, or do you do you no, do not because that takes. Well, I'll, I'll do abs, or I'll. Uh, I'm trying to think. Maybe some stretching or something. Yeah. Yeah, I always stretch before. Yeah. I've always done that. I've always stretched, uh, but I don't do as extensive stretch as I want to. Uh, but. Mm -hmm. uh, I always try to do some kind of stretching before I start. And but I think I think like going from complete, you know, to over to our gym, but the real key was going from cardiac rehab. It wasn't as if someone was instructing dad on how to work out at cardiac rehab. Dad was going in there having already known how to work out, you know, in, in, in cardiac rehab. Yeah. And so I guess the point I'd like to make there is that one of the biggest mistakes that people make at that point, it's such a crucial point, is to go from that cardiac rehab, what you really ought to consider doing at that very moment is to hire a professional and someone who really has the experience. Because, you know, dad was able to stay at that gym and, and no longer be in cardiac rehab, but he knew the movements. He'd been doing these movements for years. Most people don't know the movements. Right. They don't know what to stretch to make sure they don't injure their rotator cuff. They don't know what to stretch to make sure they don't hurt their low back. You know, they don't know what to stretch to make sure they don't hurt their knee when they're doing the cardio. So at that critical point where you leave cardiac rehab, you have a decision that you have to make at that point. 
and just joining a fitness center it isn't it isn't the answer because you may be doing things at that fitness center that could be furthering an imbalance and therefore creating and continuing an acidic environment in your body so if there's at any point where it's going to make sense for you to hire a professional it's going to be right then and there get somebody that can take you nice and slow you know through the process and instruct you on how you know how your mobility needs to be how your flexibility needs to be uh, where you're weak and you know how we can make you stronger in those areas slowly building your cardio for you thank goodness dad just had that experience he had spent his whole life in the gym you know but the average person doesn't well, you know that's a good, very good point because uh, many people who come into the gym like you say uh, they don't know what exercises to start with and 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 they Coming out of cardiac rehab, they're only interested in your heart rate. So they're not giving you body, o overall body uh, workout. They're yeah. giving you a cardio workout just to get your heart right. pumping, right. make sure it's okay. Yeah. Uh, so a trainer is going to take you through, and this is my opinion, through your entire body. They're in other words, when you get done with a, a workout with them, uh, two, three days a week, you've got a set program that will cover your whole body every time right. and that's what you want to do and, and that's what I try to accomplish with my workout but like you said I've been doing it so long that uh, when I went in there you know I remember purchased for Christmas I got yeah. one of those heart monitor watches yes and I would track every exercise that I did until it got so consistent I knew what my heart rate was going to be after every exercise right. uh, uh, I stopped wearing it, but the yeah. uh, point is, you want to be able to go from cover your legs, cover your chest, co I don't do chest because of heart surgery, they wire your chest shut and they, that's the first thing Dr. Carter said to me, don't do any chest. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't want you bench pressing something that's heavy. Right, that's, uh, right. Yeah, but you work everything else. Yeah, yeah, you work everything well, else. Well, I get chest through, like I told you earlier, through, through your core. Yeah. A lot of the exercises I do also yeah. hits your, hit your whole ab area and your chest. How do you feel like the food has impacted your workout? Staying consistent on your food. The difference between before your heart attack, I'm not saying you ate bad because you didn't. I mean, you, you, you were still a good example of healthy eating, yeah. but it was a different kind of eating and you were always trying to fuel your, you know, fill your hunger somehow, you know, so how do your workouts feel now on this food versus what they were before the heart attack? In the, the beginning in the gym, I, I can tell from the food, the food allowed you to continue, continuously grow in strength and in size and I can what I mean by that is I like to start an exercise with 10 10 to 12 reps and then I, I'll work up to 15 and then when I you know and this may take one week to two weeks and when I get to 18 uh, I'll raise the weight uh, the J rod the protein yes. I kept getting all of all of the protein in that nutrition diet that I was on uh, helped me keep enhancing my muscle yes. strength and my size and everything. I wasn't trying, I never tried to get size, I just like, uh, I like the strength part of it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I worked all the muscle groups except the chest and I, I developed a, a program now where basically I'm doing what I call maintenance. I've reached my max strength. I'm not in there trying to do six reps to pump right. up and right. gain more strength because I'm happy where I'm at. I'm also in that age group. I want to I want to manage my uh, joints and I want to manage my uh, yeah. my uh, muscles so that uh, I don't strain anything. Right. So I'm able to maintain the strength and uh, uh, agility and uh, what do you want to say the uh, and the flexibility too. Uh, I feel like you have done very well with yeah. But you really feel like the food made the difference. Like you feel that that's really helped the, you to to gr to grow stronger after the, this heart attack, the, as in comparison to before when you were working right, out. The right food definitely makes a difference, not only in in strength building and conditioning, uh, but also in in your health. You're not you're not coming down with the the flu. You're not right. coming down with cold. Immune often. system changes. And you'll get yes. it, but you know, but not as 
you know, maybe once a year. Right. But you maintain the, you just. Yeah. Uh, just stay healthy. Recognize it, yeah. I guess that would be my last uh, topic that I want to talk about. Most people that know me, folks that have worked with me, people that just watch me or read or listen to the radio show, they obviously know I kind of have a no-nonsense approach to food and nutrition. Uh, I really don't make excuses for people who make excuses. I don't make excuses for people that make choices to, to not be healthy. But I do always support and love and nurture and kindly try to assist people into making the right decisions. No matter how many times they've made mistakes, I, I'm always there to try to support someone and, and build them through it. But I guess what I want to know is how, how do you stay on this food, Dad? I hear excuses all day long of why people can't stay on their food. They have kids. They have a husband. They have a wife. They have, they have a job. They, they've got a heart, they had a heart attack. They, they, I get excuses all day long on why people can't uh, stay on their food. How do you stay on it? How have you stayed on it for seven and a half years? I, I think, uh, I, I can recall talking to Mark about two weeks ago and it, it comes down to having a great support group around you, having people that understand uh, what you're trying to accomplish. They're not taking you out to lunch and saying, oh, why don't you eat this? It's not sure. going to hurt you. Right. They, they know that they see the results of what you have and they're trying to, yeah, they're, to support they're, you. They're, they're letting you do what you do. Your family's helping support you by recognizing that too and, and, and uh, helping you make those decisions. Right. Uh, it's a, a team. It, it definitely is. You know, it's, it's, it's just like life itself. If you surround yourself with positive people, you're going to have po be positive and have positive success. But right. if you surround yourself with people that are negative about food, then you're going to be negative about food right. and, and eat the wrong things at the wrong time. It's exactly uh, right. Exactly right. Yeah. You know, I think Dad has a team at home. You know, we, we've all helped him. Mom, Dad, Bob, Kim, we've all, you know, been yeah. there to help him every way that we could uh, but he also has a team at integrity and uh, our other clients they all have each other inside that facility it is a family uh, environment uh, you know our clients come in and they feel like they have other people there to support them people, on the days that dad's not there people will message me and say is everything okay with your dad i didn't see him this morning just want to make sure he's doing okay uh, you know they kind of hold them accountable to be there uh, but there's a support system of people that are trying just as hard as you are and have gone through similar circumstances and they, they really, they know what you've gone through and they support you through it. And that's the kind of environment that I want integrity to be. And I'm super thankful. And I know that you appreciate, you know, the, the opportunity to be there as well, dad. But, you know, as I close this up, I just like for everyone to hear from you, you know, just general experience and being at integrity and, and you know, why they don't have to feel intimidated to take a step in the door in the direction of personal training and nutrition at a place like integrity. Well, the first thought that comes to you is that everyone is on the same plane. They all have the same mindset. They're there to try to help you accomplish uh, your goals. They're, and it, it really sinks into you when someone succeeds, it really makes you feel good to see someone who is, is getting that success they want. I mean, it's, uh, and, and to, to see, it, there's things like, you'll see a person when they first show up and uh, they're barely moving around and everything, and then after, you know, six, eight, ten mm -hmm. weeks, you've talked to them, watched them. I, I can remember uh, Art uh, walking, yeah. I, all I could see was the back of him. I did not think that was him. I recognized the shirt and that, because this guy is moving really fast and, right. and strong looking. And he looks and, really and strong, I, right? I, Muscle, yeah. yeah. I just remember that one day and I tell him about um, Mark, you know, that both of them, they just impress you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the term, they motivate you to want, to want right. to do things. And that's what you get out of the gym. Everyone's goal is to make you successful. And, and the trainers, I, I enjoy listening to the trainers work with people, and uh, mm -hmm. that's one of the, the nice things about being in there working out. 
I can go in and work out and just get it done and, and not uh, uh, be impacted right. uh, and I'm not impact anyone. That's yeah. the key. It's so just one, it's a non-intimidation, non-intimidating yeah. environment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One thing I'd want to add before we do wrap up is that the, the, the message I'd want to get across about heart surgery is that you can recover. So if you have a, 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 a husband, a wife, or, or a child, uh, a, a, an aunt, an uncle, a, a neighbor, a friend, a co-worker, and they go, go have the heart surgery, keep telling them you can recover, just take your time. Yes. That was the message my brother gave me when I came out of the hospital, take your time. You'll, you'll, you'll get, you'll, it'll come back to you. And it has, for me, it has come back. Yeah. I'm very happy with it, so. Yeah, and we're thankful to have you there, Dad. It's been really a sincere blessing to all of us to be able to see you there every day and you inspire all of us every time that you come in. And we're just, we're truly thankful to have you part of the facility. And what we want to, what we want to say is, like I said, at that, at that integral point, when, like where Dad was, where he went from, you know, being in cardiac rehab and and working his way out of cardiac rehab and needing, you know, the assistance and making the decision: Am I going to join a gym or am I going to go home and am I going to not do anything about this? I would like to put out there, don't just join a fitness center. You need help. You need guidance. You need a plan. You need someone that's going to focus on flexibility, mobility, and strength, and someone that's going to slowly progress you from a, a cardio standpoint. That's what we do. If you're scared, if you're intimidated, come in. It's a private environment. It's not a fitness center. You, you don't buy a membership. You can come in for a free fitness assessment at Integrity. There's absolutely no charge. There, you do not have to feel obligated to buy anything. Just come in and get a feel for the place. We'll teach you how to stretch. We'll teach you how to foam roll. We'll teach you any mobility exercises you need for what we find that is, you know, maybe limiting you uh, when we take you through that assessment. And then on top of that, inquire. Inquire about the five-month nutrition program that we have. We tell you exactly what to eat, where to buy it from, how to prepare it, what to order when you eat out, what you should do if you travel, what you should drink, any vitamins and minerals you should take. We send you home with a cookbook. You are equipped and you know exactly what to do. If you don't if you don't have the experience on your own and then you go to a registered dietitian and the biggest concern of hers is that you know whole foods will take your whole paycheck we really need you to get with someone that can help you cut you to the front of the line tell you exactly what to do the food has changed my dad's life it has changed my life it has changed my mom's life we are all better people because we remain on a healthy eating plan it's not because we're on a diet it's because we've just changed our life with food you know food has truly changed our life so for more information about what we do and, and the facility that dad works out with us at please take a look at us at integritytraininggroup.com and also give us a call schedule the fitness assessment 636-299-2208 dad i really appreciate you coming on it's been really nice to hear from you i know everyone will really appreciate hearing from you thank you well, thanks yeah, thank you all for listening and God bless.